Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we're going to test more space plane designs in the hope of getting one that will successfully rescue our Kerbal off of Lathe. And to that end I have adjusted the puck into the puck 2. The puck had an air intake on top and only one of the rapier engines. Now we have two rapier engines and shock cone intakes instead on the side and hopefully that will reduce I don't think it'll reduce drag, but I mean, it is a marginal reduction in drag if drag was actually applied properly, which it probably isn't. Somebody talked about doing a space, uh, it's not a space plane, a seaplane, and that might be a good idea. And to that end, I moved the wing up. Uh, it might be good to keep the wing down for a seaplane. I'm not sure for buoyancy, maybe. Um, of course, in real life, all seaplanes have the wing high. So, well, not all seaplanes. The ones with pontoons don't, but they have the big pontoons going on. So, or floats. Uh, so, generally, you want the wing high, but... Yeah, I don't know how Kerbal seaplanes work exactly. Uh, and I suspect that keeping the wing low probably wouldn't be a big deal for it. But, yep, uh, we'll, we'll try the high wing design this time. I've changed a lot of things, which is always bad when you're experimenting. Uh, we're still going with VTOL for now, though. We're not doing seaplane yet, uh, but we'll go on to that, I think. There's got to be a plane design time here, and uh, some people were down on the whole plane testing thing, but I don't know why. The last one worked pretty well. I mean, yes, it didn't get to orbit, but it took off vertically on its first test, and when we lost communication, it glided safely to a splashdown. And was recoverable. So, I mean, it turned out pretty well, though, as far as I'm concerned, uh, for first test. It could have gone worse. Obviously, I don't know all the special tricks people use in stock to uh, optimize their aerodynamics. Cheat, I mean, cheat, they cheat. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't do that. I, I, I in principle, want to keep my designs uh, such that if we were using FAR, it'd still work kind of thing. So right now we're configured uh, VTOL, you can see the center of the, the thrust vector. Our center of lift is a little bit far back and up now. Um, I don't know how that's going to work out. I usually do low wing designs, so anyway, we want to have the thrust limiter up and this time we're starting with air breathing. Last time we accidentally had it on rocket mode first. We obviously have less delta V now because we're carrying an extra intake and an extra engine. And I haven't added that much extra um, fuel. We added a little bit in this tailpiece. Uh, so we'll have to see about that. And we do not want a pilot. And uh, in exchange for that, we should put a antenna. So, and those are not combinable. I mean, we could try this relay antenna which would have better range and be more likely to communicate with things. But it's heavier, of course. Oh, this is not the one. With that being the idea, let's try it out. So we may try seaplanes. We may try a plane with uh, parachutes. This thing looks hefty. It looks like a VTOL now, doesn't it, with the high, higher wing? Uh, let's see. SAS on, throttle is up and ignition and okay Successful transition to horizontal flight. Well, this sure has a lot more to it. Let's see. It did take a lot to do the VTOL, though. Still very sticky here. It's one of those downsides of stock. Uh, it's just not working out very well. I'm gonna turn around so we stay above the KSC. This is all just testing. Okay, now can we accelerate properly? 
Okay, it looks like I just needed to get higher initially first. We're obviously not going to make orbit this time. Well, I'm, I'm going to try and bring it down for a landing instead of trying to go high and fast. We'll uh, dump fuel. Actually, we should uh, see about a veto landing, maybe. This is going to be bad. Uh, after all, that's uh, part of the plan, right? We should have this have a higher fuel priority. Oh. Oh, it's stalled. Oh, I was not paying attention. Sorry, sorry. No, oh, that should be balanced. Okay, so, yeah. We will change fuel priority later. Okay, we better turn on the engines a bit. Transitioning from VTOL to horizontal flight is one thing. Trans transitioning from horizontal flight to VTOL is a totally different thing. Okay, let's say control from the top. Oh, oh, okay, it doesn't like that much. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, oh no. Uh, my control scheme is all weird. Um... Okay, no. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, controlling this is weird now. Um, you know what? I prefer from the cockpit, actually. <laughs> I don't understand what the heck is going on right there. Taking off the rapiers. Oh, 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 it's stalling. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 Don't do this. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, VTOL landings are tough, you see. Yeah. That that probably isn't the best idea. Takes a lot of fuel too. All right, let's recover. So, as nice as VTOL might be, it'll take a bit of practice. Let's try the parachute version and just see if we can get to over. Now I've got a sense of what we need to do as far as pitch down at certain altitudes in order to get to high velocities. Um, we can try and just take off normally and then get to orbit. And uh, our mass is 18 tons, but that's... Well, I mean, we have to assume that we're going to land at 18 tons, so that is the thing. Uh, so that's 12 parachutes. No, we could probably do with less because we we were plain. Our landing gear can probably sustain it. Okay, overall it handled pretty well, so I'm not too worried about the center mass and center lift. I do want this tank to drain first because it's the one that's out of sync with everything else the most. In other words, um... Everything else is balanced to each other, so they can all drain at the same time. This one should drain earlier, too. Okay. Right. Now parachutes. So, Puck 3. And I want to think about the uh, seaplane version as well. And that probably will result in catastrophe, so I'll, I'll expect that. Let's make sure there's nobody inside. We're not doing VTOL anymore 
in this case. So we don't need this controller on top. Might be better to have a smaller controller there in the first place. Okay, let's try a parachute version. Okay, actually the first time we are trying to take off with this horizontally, throttle up, and we are on air breathing, good, and go. Off we go. Not bad as far as fully weighted stall speed. Okay, let's horizontalize. A little bit more. Let me take a look at how our thrust is doing. It is a little bit wiggly right now. We might be able to do with less wing with all this power. It's basically a rocket. <laughs> 720 is a crossover point where we probably should be using the oxidizer. Okay. Oh, oh no, it stalled. Ah! Well. Change mode. Change mode? Oh, it's still uh, this thrust limited on closed cycle. Who said that? Who said that? Uh, uh I lost all the speed. Ah, uh, we stalled. I pulled up too vigorously. Feels very imbalanced right now. The high wing might not be good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's too prone to stalling. We'll have to review the stuff in the SPH, but I'm going to arm the parachutes now. But, of course, it's much lighter than it would be on the actual landing on Leif. And Leif has a thinner atmosphere, so we may need to move to more parachutes. Okay, we have no communication. But all the parachutes are armed. But this is also prone to stalling. But that doesn't matter with parachutes. <laughs> so, uh, possibilities here. No, that's a heck of an angle. It seems appropriate, to be honest. Still not doing too badly, actually. Nope. Parachutes right there. Actually, after parachute deployment, it started going faster, which is interesting. And oriented more decisively prograde. I guess because the parachutes pulled the center of lift back and the center of lift was too far forward otherwise. Oh, we've got comms. I'll just turn off SAS. All right, recover vessel. Okay, I've decided to do something completely different and use the Mark 1 inline cockpit here. And we should dump the mom propellant and try and put the intake on the front and just a single rapier at the back and see how this works out again with the parachutes in this case so sort of completely different setup and you can see the center of mass and center of lift there um, those will move a little bit based on the emptying of the liquid fuel but otherwise the fuel tanks are centered on the on the center of mass so everything else should be equal so it doesn't move that much and yeah, well, 
this is another way of doing things and we'll see how it works out. Maybe it won't have enough power with just the one rapier, but I was concerned because our vacuum delta V is not very high. We need to be able to at least transfer to Jewel. And it didn't seem like we were getting that with the other setup because we had too much dry mass with the two rapiers. So let's see if cutting it down might work out or whether this just doesn't have enough uh, total power to break the sound barrier, etc. So let's just make sure we're on air breathing first. And also that we are going to switch mode like that. All right. And no Kerbal. All right. Oh, and I changed the, the controller. We had the large controller here. We just have the Protobodine Octo 2 right here now. So that's a little bit lighter. Okay. So basically we are a rapier powered MiG-21 with twin tails, I guess. I don't really need the ladder down. I don't know if it creates more drag, I doubt it. Basically physicsless, right? Okay, and SAS on, throttle up, and go. We're a little bit longish, so rotation is going to be tricky. Okay, just barely managed not to script the tail. Yeah, might want to rethink the long longness of it, <laughs> and or maybe lengthen the height of the or heighten the wheels. I don't think this has enough power. Okay, now we're going up a little bit better, but we better not lose line of sight. We do have that antenna, but it really doesn't have that much range to communicate with stuff. We have satellites overhead. Really, I don't think we've carried enough liquid fuel, it looks like. I mean, liquid fuel that isn't tied to oxidizer. Okay, let's see whether it can or cannot do the sound barrier thing. I'm gonna say this one's a no. It's not doing well enough. We're gonna splash down. And then we're gonna try a completely different test, which is whether it can take off from the water. If we have communication from the water, of course. The parachutes. Parachutes are a little bit better at balance this time. Okay, well, alright. Um, this is sort of somewhat submerged. I don't know how well that's going to work out for us. But, hey, let's find out. And our air intake isn't in the greatest situation either. Uh, steering isn't super. We may need, like, pontoons. Steering isn't awesome right now. The I've never tried seaplanes before in Kerbal, so... I think the art of seaplanes eludes me. It's very dolphin-like. But I think we need higher mounted engines. I think every time it gets submerged, it loses thrust. Let's see. Oh, nope. It doesn't seem to. It doesn't say so, anyway. What if I put landing gear down? That doesn't seem to help. Pushing down on a stick does not help. Pulling up does not help. But yeah, in general, I think seaplanes are definitely not for me. At the moment. I might have to mimic the look of them to get it right. Well, those are crano planes, maybe for a start. Still fun, though. Alright, 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 alright. Recover. 
Okay, so that didn't have enough power. Let's go back a step and try and put more fuel on the previous one. Since it had enough power, it just didn't have enough fuel to transfer to to Jewel. Okay, so back to Puck 4. Well, now Puck 6. Uh, I've added some more fuel. We've got those fuel tanks there and some token Oscar Bs in the back there. Uh, added another couple of parachutes to compensate for that. And uh, changed uh, Big Core to just a uh, Octo 2 with this small nose cone there. So rearranged a few things. And, well, still the Delta V will be pretty tight as far as going to jewels. So not thrilled with that, but we'll see how it goes. Let's make sure that's on air breathing. And, yeah, we will try again. No, Megan, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, yes, we will try again and see what happens. Uh, looks like our landing gear is a little bit too far forward now, so let's adjust that. Let's see, it's, it's behind the center of mass, but I guess not behind enough. Alright, everything's in order. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. Oh! I pulled up too vigorously. Brakes. Uh, but the rapier is where the expensive part. Will it stop in time? All these parachutes! <laughs> They're not exactly drag chutes. I don't think it's gonna stop in time. Uh... Oh, just barely. There we go. Okay, well, still, we lost the rapiers, though. Maybe putting the landing gear down a little lower would be better. Alright, let's give it another go. Throttle up, SES on, and ignition. Let me get this view so that I can be very careful about it. It's pointing a little bit nose down right now because I lowered the main landing gear without lowering the nose gear. Uh, very close. Hmm, that might not be great for taking off from Lathe though. Okay, beginning to accelerate. Well, we are heavier, so... Accelerating is not as easy as it was with the Puck 4. Okay, looking good. Let me try not to get out of whack this time. A thousand meters per second. A thousand two hundred. And we're sort of peeking out there. And switch mode. And do not pitch up too much. We have a surplus of oxidizer, so we took too much liquid fuel. So, it looks like our intended solution in this case will be to use parachutes. We are carrying the parachutes. <laughs> So, that will be our plan. And we'll see how that works out to land at the location we want. And then we'll have to try and take off with this from Lathe. So, how will our communication be? Uh, getting any sort of comms here will be a stretch, so let's just extend that antenna. Oh, we've already lost comms. Uh, okay, we regained comms just in time with that antenna. So the question I am pondering is, do we go to Leif with this or we do, do we try something else? I could just build a really big space plane with lots of margin. I mean, this is obviously a tight margin thing. The problem with that is, the bigger the space plane, the harder it is to refuel it there. And, you know, they're carrying nerves in the back and all that business we could do. But 
You know, we can make a humongous thing with lots of Delta V, but then if we want to refuel it, it's tougher. But its Delta V margins are pretty tight. So it can get to orbit around Kerbin, but it can't do that around Leaf, that's another question. So, should I go with this option, or should I do something else? I will ponder that, and you can discuss that in the comments. But for now, this has been a space plane testing episode with some issues, <laughs> and uh, but hopefully interesting. So if you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.